Thank you for a very gracious introduction. And uh, I have a couple of challenges in this presentation. The first one being that I am the first presenter after lunch, which means that people aren't going to be angry or nervous because they've eaten something, so they might not going to chew my head off. And secondly, uh, the challenge is that I have to wake people up a little bit. So we're going to do a little exercise together. First off, I'm going to start by saying how much gratitude I have for being invited to such an event, for being among such talented, multicultural, uh, self-actualized from so many different cultures, from so many different um, social constructs, but all united under one common aim and purpose, which is bettering our society and bettering our world. And I'd like to say that it's quite a rare occasion. I'd like to argue that very few people on our planet actually get to sit in a room like this and talk about these issues. So, to start off my presentation, I'd like us all to get up just a little bit. It won't last too long. And in the spirit of connection, I'd like you guys to turn to the person next to you and say, you're awesome. Can you do that? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, you can sit down now, please. So uh, my second challenge is that it's a little confession, actually. I wrote this title about maybe a month and a half ago, and uh, I didn't know that we're having these slotting and categorization sections. So I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I don't know the first thing about designing cities, but I am a conscientious participant of them. And um, what I'd like to talk about and focus more on, actually, is the, human, the humane part, actually. So I'd like to kick off this question with what does it mean to be human? Because Albert Einstein said over 60 years ago or so that we have definitely outpaced uh, or technology has definitely outpaced our humanity. And it struck me always because I worked in technology for so long and I worked in marketing and quite frankly, um, I found that it was kind of this world where although a lot of good can come, there could also be a lot of crap and wastage produced in the name of progress. And it got me thinking about this uh, factor about why do humans always, um, in the name of progress, in the name of, society, in the name of uh, monetary gain, seem to always be rushing ahead for some kind of unreachable goal? You know, what is that internal hunger that can't ever be satisfied, that produces all this inequality, this imbalance and this disharmony in our society. So what does it mean to be human? Is it our needs? I mean, are we defined by our needs? I think that most of you will agree that in our society today, we've kind of conquered, at least in most parts, the monetary need, the survival need. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, we have enough resources to feed, clothe the world over three, four times, but we don't. And at the same time, we're still, uh, or we have this phenomenon of a rising number of depression and anxiety in our cities. What about community and belonging? We have all this technology that brings us closer together, but we've never been more isolated in some respects. Who's experienced that? I mean, sitting behind your phone on Facebook, messaging to people halfway around the world, which is an incredible achievement for humanity. But at the same time, we lose that sense of connection. Purpose is an elusive one. I've always been a, a chaser of purpose. And uh, here is, I think, where sometimes the danger exceeds the benefits of purpose. And it's something that's being marketed today in our society as the all-important thing. But, you know, I've realized that sometimes, as human beings, we have this wonderful tendency to project stuff. And if we're not aware about what stage or what needs we're projecting onto our purpose, it can be a very dangerous issue. I mean, entire um, right-wing uh, movements have happened from this. I mean, think about Hitler. People actually agreed with him. They actually thought that it was a good idea at the time. All in the name of purpose. So for me, I think the most key quality, at least in my experience, is this idea of transcendence. How we're meant to actually transcend our needs, so to speak. 
And uh, technology is a great exemplification of that. We've been able to provide an infrastructure that allows us to transcend all those base needs that we have. But somehow, we're still stuck in this survival mindset, which is driving all this hunger for monetary growth all the time. The word economics itself is supposed to mean uh, the laws of the ecosystem, but I don't see much of an interest in an ecosystem in economics sometimes. Maybe just financially speaking, but look at what we're doing to nature. And so, and so, and so I'd like to introduce you to the map of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins. Now for the scientifically minded, I'll tell you that um, it's not a scientific by your terms measurement, so to speak. So I'd like you guys to treat it as a a map of perception, so to speak, because we've covered the idea of emotions today in great length, and I'm so happy for that because we have this context for this discussion, but our lives are so much governed by these unseen forces, starting with shame and guilt that we talked about, which is actually, as you can see on the scale, one of the lowest forms is the area or, or the, the emotion where people decide to become homeless and they want to step away from society. Moving up, you have apathy, grief, and fear. And I think fear, as you can agree, is one that divides nations. And a lot of the world's events today is driven by a fear-based thinking. If you think about how the human brain works, you have these three layers. You have the reptilian brain, you have the limbic system, which is from the mammalian system, and then you finally have the prefrontal, uh, prefrontal lobe cortex. And in order to get a message or an idea across, you kind of have to transverse these ancient neuropathways, so to speak. And it's almost as always we have this little fear stuck in the way. So we're meant to transcend that and be aware of that at every step. As you move up, you have desire. And I think uh, a lot of societies rush for uh, monetary significance comes from that. You have anger, and uh, at anger, you basically uh, are projecting a lot of these pent up fears that you have. And as you go further up, you have courage. Now, I'd say that a good part of um, the world that we live in is probably around courage. But what's interesting is what happens above courage, where you have neutrality, willingness, and acceptance where you have emotions such as forgiveness. And I think, yes, it takes courage to stand up and, I don't know, criticize the world problems, but are you able to go a step further and actually forgive the people involved in those kind of conversations? Because that's the bridge, actually, that we can create so that we can move beyond that. So, acceptance, and now reason is the level that they say is the scientist, uh, the objective thinker. And um, it's produced much of the world's advances that we have around us today. And I'll argue that's an amazing thing. I think a lot of us basically in this room are at least at reason and higher. Um, but I'd say also that there's a couple of steps further up. Before I go on to explain the other steps, I'm going to continue with how basically I came somewhat to these realizations in my own life and in my own journey. And uh, what I do, is I coach entrepreneurs to have a more aware way of thinking about their lives and their work because I think entrepreneurship is an incredible vehicle for freedom. It's why I got into it. But at the same time, it's also a very, very, very um, clever trap that you can fall into because I basically got into entrepreneurship for freedom, but I ended up creating myself a job, which I ended up working more than anyone else that I employed. So um, in my journey, uh, I realized that it's very important to be aware of what stage you're at because a lot of people can confuse the idea of financial survival with purpose, as I mentioned earlier. And a lot of people actually, that gets to hold them back. They tend to shoot maybe a bit higher. They identify so strongly with their vehicle that it becomes a pain and it's almost really difficult to move forward and experience life, you know? Um, so what I teach is that in the beginning, at the bottom, 
it's about the survival and that's okay we're meant to transcend we're meant to overcome that you can't just jump straight to the purpose element or the essence element and expect to be this great artist or whatever you might be able to do that but not all of us can and so in this level it's all about um, directing your focus and having a clear strategy about what you want and who it is that you want to serve I mean a lot of us get confused that we have to offer to too many different markets too many different people and we end up pleasing everyone but ourselves so in this uh, level it's all about creating a scalable and predictable revenue generation model now it doesn't have to be entrepreneurship as a vehicle I mean a job also provides that but there are some other aspects that I'll argue that also can get confused in a job. So once you have this, it's uh, a matter of also going towards being able to create freedom of time. And this is where maybe a job might, a bit, might be a bit limited, but then you have companies such as Google, which have these initiatives which allow people at least 20% of their time to focus on whatever their uh, passion or purpose is. And it's a great example because it actually works. They feel empowered. They deliver innovation. They solve problems. And in this stage, from a business perspective, it's all about how you can automate processes, learn how to delegate, learn how to let go, actually, because that's the hardest thing sometimes as an entrepreneur or a person in general. It's just that letting go. And in this stage, it's all about actually ignoring. So where once it was about focusing your attention and having a clear strategy, in this stage, it's all about ignoring all the aspects that aren't essential. And in this stage, it's all about kind of stripping away these things. And I'll say to you also, it's, it's the same basically in our lives. I mean, how much attention do we afford to all this negative media? And how does that make us feel? And what kind of reactions that creates around the world? You know, sometimes life is or can be a lot simpler if you learn to ignore that because you have to recognize that it's a marketplace for your attention. And it's very easy and purposely done so that you stay distracted. So learn to ignore basically is such a powerful tool. Now, I found that once you have these two things covered, both as a company, as a person, and maybe even as society, then we can have the space and the freedom to focus on our purpose. But I'll tell you one thing about pur purpose. Purpose is very illusory. What if someone told you, or God came down from heaven and said, your purpose is to be the local baker for the rest of your life. How would you feel? Or your purpose is to free a country and then that country gets freed. Now, what's my purpose? Because at the essence actually of this level, once you get to cut all that noise and all that bullshit, is basically your pure being. And that pure being is actually really free. There are so many purposes you can't even get involved in. And I like to give the analogy of how basically kids grow up. They have their financial survival covered by their parents. They have a lot of free time and that allows them to play. And as you'll see basically back on the scale here, play or joy is actually one of the highest forms of consciousness or perception. It's where that freedom of thinking can occur when you go beyond all limitations and you get to express yourself freely. And, uh, and that's only when basically you can get a very genuine sense of purpose. I don't know if I'm there yet. I'm just playing right now, basically. I didn't even script the speech. I just thought I'd come here and share a couple of my thoughts on stage and see what happens. Are you having fun? Yes. Ah, yeah, it's a great event. So, throughout all this, the key thing is actually awareness. And that's actually the key for ascending those levels of perception. And Alex, you did a great job describing basically the process of that. It's kind of cocooning yourself in that space where you get that free time and just sitting with those emotions, sitting with those uh, challenges and letting them basically express themselves and not suppressing, not avoiding because that's just going to create more unconscious behavior on a personal and a global scale. So. The other aspect for me is basically this aspect of time and I've had these little conversations with people and I feel like it's a subject that people are really, really interested in talking about, specifically the notion that time is an illusion. Time, I just found out, I was reading today just to verify my idea, sometimes I like to just be intuitive, I don't think on a very logical or rational basis, uh, but 
time basically was a system agreed by the Babylonians. That's how we had this, the, the seconds or the, the 60 second system. There's also a metric system. The French basically during the revolution tried to bring it in. Uh, Einstein says that time is completely relative. And why is this aspect so important is because in this busy society that we have, time, and it's ironic because my time is running out, time basically is this factor that seems to govern our very existence. There is a beautiful scene in the movie Wonder Woman. Yep, I know. I get meaning from movies like that. I, th I feel the same, actually. And uh, this guy, Chris Pine, who's the spy, uh, kind of flies in with his plane and crashes into this Amazonian island. And in this Amazonian island are all these wild, beautiful goddesses, basically, but who have no concept of time. And in typical Hollywood fashion, Chris Pine is sitting in a jacuzzi naked, and in comes uh, Gal Gadot, and looks down like this, and of course, in hip, typical Hollywood fashion, which makes no logical sense, he gets up and goes, and she says, what is that? And he goes, oh, 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 you mean this, my watch. He's like, well, this is, a, this is a watch, what is it? Well, basically, it tells us when to get up in the morning, it tells us when to go have coffee, it tells us when to get to work, it tells us when to meet our friends, it tells us how long we have until the next presentation, it tell, tells us how long I don't have left. And she goes to him and answers in the most beautiful fashion and says, you let that little thing dictate your entire life. And so I'm just going to conclude very quickly. I know I'm over, <clears throat> but I think this deserves a conclusion. I finally came to my own conclusion, <laughs> which is in our future cities, I hope that we are going to create a much more aware society. And in your efforts basically in trying to reach this goal which I applaud all of you for having basically transcended to a very high level of consciousness as far as I'm concerned at least and I'm no expert but just take it from me as a compliment um, I hope that sometimes you get the moment to just stop and reflect basically at where you are you get the opportunity to use your focus and awareness to ignore all the things that don't really matter and I'll tell you from experience in the last three years of living in the wilderness, so to speak, because I just literally overhauled my entire life and removed everything that wasn't essential, didn't matter, and realized that actually we don't really need that much. And the beauty of that is, is if you combine that with this approach of timelessness in your decisions, don't think that your decision will affect the next quarter or the next year, etc. What if your decision today would affect all of eternity? you might be able to find yourself in a space where you do feel and discover eternity and the solutions that you come up with can actually have a real meaningful and harmonious impact in our future cities. Thank you very much.